What's up guys? Today I'm gonna do a review of my welding machine. I've got a SAE 300, it's a 2012 model. They first come out with these machines in 2011. It was a fairly new product whenever it first came out. I didn't know hardly anything back then. Constantly learning, like I talk about all the time. I was tired of working on my SA 200s that I had. If you guys follow me at all, you know that that's what I suggest to start out with, simply because it is cheaper to get into. Anyway, I was tired of working on the old 200, so I uh, broke down and went and bought me this SAE 300. So, let's go check it out. One thing I want to mention about purchasing a weld machine and reviews on welding machines. Everybody welds a little different and every weld machine welds a little different. I want to mention that because you're going to hear so many different reviews on machines. You're going to hear one person like this machine. It's got mixed reviews, you know. Whenever they first come out, right around the time I got mine, there was guys that loved them and there was guys that hated them. Uh, a lot of that's just because everybody welds different and some of these come out welding a little better than other ones you know everybody sees that puddle a little different and uh, got different perspectives and was taught differently and uh, there's just so many different variables when it comes to welding so don't get discouraged if you can't make a decision just get a machine and weld with it all right so a couple of things about this weld machine like i said it is a 2012 model it's got exactly 5173 hours on it it's got the 32 horsepower perkins diesel in it it's got this dual they call this dual continuous control a lot of your machines have gears over here either five or seven it's a short hood it's got four gears but it's usually got gears over here as to where this one it's I call it fine-tuning you know you got fine-tuned current it's got a 16 gallon fuel tank it does not have a fuel gauge up here they come with a fuel gauge in the in the cap the cap up there on the fuel tank it had the the clear needle you know like a four-wheeler or the floater and you could see how much fuel was in it so it come with that I actually ended up taking that off because it was taking on water so I didn't like that about this machine, but not a big deal. I ordered a uh, aftermarket fuel cap for it that does not have the sight glass. It's got DC welding output, but it's got AC power for your power tools. It's got two one 115 volt outlets and it's got two 230 volt outlets right here. I haven't done anything aftermarket besides what you guys seen in the, uh, the repairs I've done to it here lately. I haven't done anything to like hop it up or whatever. I'd, just, just regular maintenance, change oil, change parts that go bad. Of course, this fuel plate is aftermarket. I, I just think this looks slick over that red face plate that comes on it. I put a flapper on it for the exhaust instead of the 90. It come with a 90 degree exhaust. And then of course the cloth doors. You guys know about them if you've followed me at all. If you haven't, there's a video on, there's a video on me putting on these cloth doors and replacing the uh, couple of parts on this machine, but you can go check that video out if you haven't. These cloth doors are from custom skirting pretty good so far I mostly like them because they're flexible you know when your weld machines on your pickup it's hard to get them doors open and off whenever you go to change oil or works on work on it so I like that that's why I chose the cloth doors was for the uh, accessibility to work on your machine back to this dual continuous control right here Whenever I first got this machine, I wasn't wasn't so sure about it. Where I liked running a bead, they ran a bead good, it didn't cap so good. But long story short, the best thing that I did with this dual continuous, especially while I was learning, uh, learning to weld, because when I got this machine, you gotta remember I hadn't been pipe welding for, not, I don't even think I'd been pipe welding for a year, so I was, I was still figuring it out as I am today. But um, I've learned a lot since then, but the best thing I did to weld with this machine is just leave it in one spot and figure it out, you know. It's been a good machine. 
I like it for the, uh, up until a couple weeks ago, it's been super reliable. After having the Messe 200s, breaking down all the time, dumping oil in them, I put this thing on my truck for five years straight. Uh, all I did was change oil in it and put fuel in it. I just walk up every day and hit the glow plugs, fire right up. That's what I've loved most about having having a, a newer machine and this machine. It's been It's been good to me for the most part. And it probably wouldn't have had the issues that it did have if I would have kept the doors on it the whole time I've had this thing. Take note, don't run with your doors off, or at least I wouldn't advise it. It's a good welding machine, not the best welding thing in the world. I've definitely welded with machines that weld a little smoother. It definitely welds, welds pretty good, you know, it's, it's not the worst thing in the world either. It's got me by and it's taught me a lot. So talking about price, whenever I bought this back in 2012, I think I gave, I wanna say right at 13, for it, 13,000. I don't really remember, but that gives you an idea of what it cost back then whenever it was brand new. A brand new machine similar to this one is going to be roughly 14 or 15,000 today. The question is, if I were to get another machine, a brand new machine, what would I get? That's really a tough decision. I don't know what I would get, but from what I hear, the MP, the new MP is, is the way to go but I don't know, they just, they're a lot more calm. They have, uh, they got it now, they've got the continuous, they got the dual continuous on an MP, but they also have gears on an MP, like different machines. One machine has a continuous, one machine has gears, uh, one machine has an arc force. Um, see that right there, there's three different MPs that you can get, at least three that I know of. But if I was to get another one, it would probably, I think I would want to try the SAE 300 with the gears, with the idle control. Oh, that's probably what I would try. But don't be surprised if I have a Miller or cross country or anything like that on here after a couple of years, because I'm willing to try anything just so I can figure out how to weld with it, you know? I mean, what better way to learn how to weld with something than to get it and uh, play with it for a couple of years, you know? So I think that's gonna be it for today's video. Hope you guys enjoyed this review. Hope you guys were able to learn something. Hopefully I didn't ramble on too much. Thank you guys for watching. Go check out arosswelding.com if you guys haven't. Don't forget, learn something every day. We'll see you guys next Friday.